Right. For more on these deals, we're joined by David Sandberg, co head of private equity at Apollo Global Management. Thank you so much, David, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Uh, some may look at these deals, especially in the sectors they're in, kind of an uncertain time right now. We haven't seen that much in the way of, of buyouts recently. Uh, they may look at this and say, wow, this is a pretty contrarian take, betting on travel, betting on retail. Uh, can you help give us a, a sense of how Apollo is viewing the future right now in a post-pandemic world? Sure. <clears throat> and first of all, thanks for having me on this afternoon. Um, look, you hit the nail on the head. Contrarian, I think, is what we're known for. Um, with both of these investments, we're taking a point of view uh, regarding the future. I think for travel in particular, this is one of several bets we've made in the last 12 months regarding the recovery of people's desires to travel, whether it's our investment in Expedia, uh, the recent Tate Private we did for Great Canadian, the large Canadian gaming company, uh, restructuring Aero Mexico out of bankruptcy, investing in Saska, the European uh, lottery operator, we're buying IGT's Lotomatica business. Uh, we've been amongst the most active in terms of expressing a view that once people are comfortable and feel safe enough to do so, they'll resume uh, past behaviors. But buying the Venetian is not just about buying travel per se, uh, because this has a large business component to it as well. The largest privately owned convention center in the United States. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our audience members have, have been there for conferences or things that are actually oriented around business travel. So do you actually see business travel as coming back as a way to benefit from this acquisition? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, the, the short answer is we do. I think the recovery curve for business travel will look a little bit different than the recovery curve for leisure travel. Um, one of the benefits of our business model is we're able to do deep due diligence and primary research. And a couple of key highlights to point out. The first is uh, traditionally business travel is correlated with corporate profits in the stock market, both of which I think you know from your reporting are doing quite well. The other thing we were able to do as part of our due diligence was really look at the business that's on the books uh, for the next three or four years because the, the, the convention business books out several years in advance and we were able to speak uh, to several customers and get a sense of their travel plans. And based on that work, we were comfortable uh, that people will return to going to conventions. And in fact, some may say the convention business could be stronger in a post-COVID world as you have distributed workforces that spend less time together, the business case for a meeting once a year, twice a year, four times a year to get people together could actually be stronger. Mm, that's, that's really interesting. I actually haven't heard it uh, put quite that way. Um, another aspect of the pandemic has been kind of this do-it-yourself mentality. People have taken up hobbies, crafting and the like. Obviously, that's been a huge uh, a boon for Michaels, which, you know, this transaction implies about a 7x multiple on forward EBITDA. As I mentioned earlier, it's a 47 percent premium to trading uh, prior to reports surfacing about this deal being in the works. Uh, you know, what is it that you see as, as your ability to derive value at these levels, uh, and are you worried that there could be a competitive bidder that might come in uh, above the $22 price target as the market is indicating right now? Right, so, so in some respects, these deals are different tides of the same coin. The Venetian's a business that was very negatively impacted by coronavirus. Michael's, to your point, is a business that did quite well uh, by people staying at home and looking for alternatives. Certainly in the early days of the recession, you quoted the stock price, the market thought that it would be negatively impacted, but it turned out being quite positively impacted. Um, look, I can't comment on, on what might happen in terms of competitors, but what I can say is um, this is a business that has done exceptionally well during the pandemic. Um, it's probably hard to envision it continues to have above normal profitability long-term, um, but what we see with this business, we have a long history in specialty retail at the firm uh, the partner that worked on this deal, Angie Drouar, has worked on several specialty retail deals. And we have a specific point of view about how to create value um, in this business. And anytime you buy a public company or even a private company like we do, it's not just the macro. you got to get the macro and the micro right. And there has to be something we're doing to create value to justify stepping up and, and buying a business. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.